gentlemen, welcome to A Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, the 2020 election is just one week away. Mark your calendars, and then get a better calendar, because it should be on there already. On November 3rd, I will have a live, live election night special over on Showtime. And yes, because it is pay cable, I am willing to do full frontal nudity, as long as it is tasteful, in keeping with my character and forwards the plot of the results from Pennsylvania, which I hear is going to be a close shave, which I will also need before the full nudity. So far, Biden is ahead in the polls and in the early voting, and apparently the secret to Biden's lead is that people find him likable. Okay, so people like Biden because he's likable. Fascinating. Though, to be fair, anyone can seem likable next to Donald Trump. Well, almost anyone. But the biggest news in the election is the coronavirus, and things are only getting plaguier. And I'll tell you all about it in tonight's edition of Catch a Third Wave, Endless Bummer. I'm rounding the turn, dude. <laughs> oh, I just keep talking and he stays there? Okay. In the past week, I wasn't sure, the U.S. averaged over 70,000 new cases a day, the most in any seven-day stretch of the pandemic. It's especially bad in swing states. New infections are raging in Wisconsin. Things are so bad in Wisconsin that it's changed its state motto from forward to stay back. Trump's pandemic approval rating in the Badger State has dropped from 51% in March to 41% in October. And his rallies could backfire even more. Polls show that holding rallies in defiance of coronavirus health recommendations has fueled voters' disapproval of his handling of the pandemic. Apparently, voters are not responding to his campaign's closing message, let the maskless man spit on you. It's, it's a clear message. The virus surge could have a big effect on Trump voters. So far, 66 million people have voted early. In fact, Projections indicate the majority of ballots will be cast before Election Day for the first time in history. As Ben Franklin so wisely put it, early to bed and early to vote. Get him out of the White House before he digs a moat. Most of the early voting has gone to the Democrats. And on the other side, Trump has spent months warning his supporters against voting by mail. So the GOP is essentially betting all of its chips on a strong Election Day. He's taking all of his chips and putting it all on black. People not voting, but they have already in massive numbers. And the disparity in early voting means that Trump needs a huge turnout on Election Day in the middle of a surging pandemic. It's the last act of Trump's death cult. All right, children of MAGA, put on your Nikes, fill your thermos with Kool-Aid, and go vote. Then, I promise, we all board the spaceships to the comet. Herman Cain, we'll see you soon. Now, Biden is getting a boost from one of his former rivals, billionaire Mike Bloomberg, seen here in fun size for Halloween. <laughs> Bloomberg has been paying for pro-Biden ads in Florida, and this week, Bloomberg will be funding a last-minute ad blitz in Ohio and Texas. He'll be reaching out to Texas voters with his trademark Texas style. Howdy and hello, fellow cowpokes. As you can see from this PowerPoint, your Texas Longhorn steers are a wonderful source of pastrami. Next slide. Last night at the White House, they held a confirmation of everything we've ever thought about them. For more on this story, we go now live to the inevitability desk. <laughs> Welcome to the inevitability desk. I am and always was going to be Stephen Colbert. Huge day for the inevitable. We can project water is wet, death comes for us all, and last night, Judge Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed 52 to 48, which means Donald Trump now has as many Supreme Court appointments as he's had wives. And unlike Trump wife, these positions last a lifetime. This has been the inevitability desk. Back to me, Steve. Thank you, Stephen. Now, 
not everything about Barrett's confirmation had to happen the way it happened, because after the Senate vote, Barrett went to the White House for a hastily thrown together swearing in ceremony and baldly political photo op with President Trump, which is not normal. A member of the Supreme Court hasn't behaved this inappropriately since Justice Kennedy appeared on the bench wearing a T-shirt that read, it's not a gavel, it's a chick hammer. Amy Coney Barrett joining the court could let conservatives limit voting in the election. But on the bright side, they're already doing that. Because yesterday, along ideological lines, the Supreme Court rejected a request to extend Wisconsin's deadline for counting mail-in ballots, a decision which could disenfranchise up to 100,000 voters, or as the conservative justices called it, a good start. Vintage Lawyer Joke Slam. This was a dumb ruling during a pandemic when many Americans are voting by mail just to stay safe, but the dumbest part came from Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh, seen here arguing the case of Brett v. Bartender who cut him off. Kavanaugh ruled against letting all the votes be counted, citing the Supreme Court's decision to arbitrarily cut off voting and hand the White House to a Republican in 2000's Bush v. Gore. That case is the worst thing to come out of 2000, and a lot of bad things happened that year. We still never got to the bottom of who let the dogs out. Reopen the cold case! Apparently. Justice Kavanaugh has graduated. Did you like that joke over there? Did you like that one? I did too. You know, I did too. Apparently, Justice Kavanaugh has graduated from local microbrews to huffing paint thinner. Because in Bush v. Gore, that court specifically said, our consideration is limited to the present circumstances, which means this ruling could not function as a precedent. Well, I guess it's too much to expect Brett Kavanaugh to listen to someone saying, stop, don't do this. In his opinion, Kavanaugh wrote that states who try to count ballots that arrive after Election Day could be hit with chaos and suspicions of impropriety. Hey, Brett, have you looked out the window? Chaos and impropriety is the 2020 prom theme. Three weeks ago, some pretend militia yahoos plotted to kidnap the governor of Michigan, and we're like, oh yeah, that happened. One person who wasn't having any of Kavanaugh's argument was Justice Elena Kagan, seen here imagining a 13-member Supreme Court. In her dissent, Kagan wrote, Justice Kavanaugh alleges that suspicions of impropriety will result if absentee ballots flown in after Election Day and potentially flip the results of an election. But there are no results to flip until all valid votes are counted. Exactly. If we don't count all the votes, we're not declaring a winner. We're just saying who's ahead at midnight. There's a reason you never hear a baseball announcer say, hey, it's the bottom of the eighth, bases loaded, all tied up, Tampa Bay three, Los Angeles three. It's a hit, a long fly ball, and let's call it there, folks. We're willing to project the Dodgers gave me my job, so they win. Hey, Wisconsinites, looks like Brett Kavanaugh doesn't want your mail-in vote to be counted in Madison or Milwaukee or Oconomowoc or Waukesha, or Oshkosh Bagash. So you make your voice heard anyway. Drop off your ballot in person. To learn how, visit our site, betterknowaballot.com slash W-I, which of course stands for we the people. Speaking of votes, the candidates out there on the road are trying to get some. Today, Trump was in Michigan for one of his super spreader rallies, and before he took the stage, CNN gave this cogent analysis. Jeremy, President Trump has to hope that the blue wall isn't uh, rebuilt along the Great Lakes. Is that behind his travel plans today? Yeah, there's no question, Brianna. First of all, excuse the uh, volume levels here. We've got Ted Nugent on guitar in the back here playing a rendition of the national anthem. Uh, but as for the president's uh, campaign schedule, he will be traveling to three uh, key states today. He's uh, going to be here in Michigan. I can't believe CNN put that on air as analysis of what's happening. And I can't believe how perfect it is as an analysis of what is happening. Because I think that clip captures exactly what's going on inside our skulls right now. We're all trying to figure out what's going on. Maybe listen to that quiet voice telling us the right thing to do. But Donald Trump is trying to drown all that out with cat scratch fever. 
After his nonstop rally schedule, you can tell Trump's getting pretty tired. To get him on stage in Michigan, they evidently had to lure him there with a honey-glazed podium. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Was, was Rudy his opening act? The last week of the campaign is traditionally when candidates crisscross the country, making their closing arguments to American voters. And today, these two candidates struck slightly different tones. Biden gave a speech in Georgia in a place called Warm Springs, which is also how you could describe Trump's mattress in that Russian hotel room. One more for old time's sake. While Trump was in Lansing, Michigan, let's hear their competing visions for this historic American moment. Over 225,000 people have lost their lives to a virus. Many of those lives lost in the cruelest way possible. COVID, 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 COVID. Too many among us spend more time shouting than listening, more time fighting than working together, more time demonizing and denigrating others than lifting them up. AOC plus three, who knows less about this stuff than any human being on Earth, but she does have a good line of crap. Will once more become one nation, under God, indivisible, a nation united, a nation strengthened, a nation healed. Without TV, television is useless. Okay. Two slightly different candidates. But somehow, somehow, the American people have to listen to that quiet voice in their head and choose the better man. And maybe just TiVo the other. We got a great show for you tonight. Dr. Sanjay Gupta is here. But when we come back, meanwhile, join us, won't you?